Stupid of times. Oh, uh, Molly? Uh, Molly? <laughs> Molly, where are you? Oh. Did you the work, you brute? There you are. Uh, leave it all to me. Shall I stoke the other? Done. Hello, sweetheart. Oh, your nose is cold. I've just come in. Why? Why you been? Surely you've not been out in this weather. Oh, I had to go down to the village for some stuff I'd forgotten. Oh, did you give the chicken netting? No, oh, it wasn't the right kind. I went on to another dump, but it wasn't any good either. Practically a whole day wasted. Oh my god, I'm half frozen. The car was skidding like anything. The snow's coming down thick. What do you bet we're not snowed up tomorrow? Yeah, do you hope not? If only the pipes don't freeze. You wish they sent more coal along? We've not got any too much. Oh, Giles, I do want everything to go so well at first. First impressions are so important. Is everything ready? Nobody's arrived yet, I suppose. No, thank goodness, sir. I think everything's in order. Mrs. Barlow put it earlier. Afraid of the weather, I suppose. Uh, what a nuisance these daily women are. It leaves everything on your shoulders. And yours. This is a partnership. So long as you don't ask me to cook. No, no. That's my department. Anyway, we've got lots of tins in case you're snowed up. Oh, Giles, do you think it's going to be all right? You've got cold feet, have you? Are you sorry now we didn't sell this place instead of having this mad idea of running it as a guest house, no less? No, 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 I, I'm not. Oh, I love it. Uh, talking of guest house, let's look at that. Oh, pretty good. What? It's a disaster, don't you see? You, you've left out the eggs. Mark well, it's a mark's well. However, then I come to do that. It doesn't really matter, does it? Monkwell is just as good a name. You're in disgrace. Go and snow up the central peel. Across that icy yard? Shall I bank it up for the night now? No, no, you don't do that till 10 or 11 o'clock at night. Oh, how appalling. Hurry up, someone may arrive any minute now. You've got all the rooms worked out. Yes. Uh, Mrs. Boyle's front four poster room, uh, Major Metcalf's blue room, Miss Casewell's east room, and Mr. Red Oak room. I wonder what all these people will be like. Ought we to have got rent in advance? Oh no, I don't think so. Or rather much of this game. They bring money. If they don't pay, we take off the loan. It's quite simple. Well, I can't help thinking we ought to have taken a course in hotel keeping. We should have get had somehow. Oh, why the luggage might just be bricks wrapped up in newspaper. Why should we be then? They all wrote from very good addresses. That's what servants with four dresses do. Some of these people may be criminals hiding from the police. I don't care what they are, so long as it pays fifteen pounds a week. Oh, you're such a wonderful woman in business. And of course, it's stuck at night, the plan did place a twenty-four coal machine in Paddington. The murdered woman was a Mrs. Maureen Leon. In connection with the murder, the police are anxious to interview a man seen in the city by the dark of the light star. And soft, so happy. Not just a woman against ice bound road, and 
Whether it's simply on the roof. My taxi gave up at your gate. Wouldn't have had to drive. Not supporting it. Are you Mrs. Ralston? How delightful. My name is Ren. Well, how do you do, Mr. Ren? You know, you're not at all as I pictured you. I've been thinking of you as a retired general's widow. Indian Army. I thought you'd be terrifically grim and men so hibbish. And that the whole place would be simply crammed with bananas brass. Instead, it's, it's heavenly. Quite heavenly. That's a fake. Ooh, but this thing was genuine. I'm simply going to love this place. Have you got any wax flowers or birds of paradise? No, I'm afraid not. Uh, whatever, Diddy. Well, what about a sideboard? A purple, plummy, mahogany sideboard with great soggy cut fruits on it? Oh, yes, we do. In the dining room. In here? I must see it. <laughs> Absolutely perfect. Real bedroom respectability. But why do away with the center mahogany table? Little tables just follow the effect. Well, we thought our guests would prefer them. Oh, this is my husband. How do you do? Terrible weather, isn't it? Takes one back to Dickens and Scrooge and that irritating tiny Tim. So gorgeous. <laughs> of course, Mrs. Ralston, you're absolutely right about the little tables. If you had a mahogany tiny table to pull, you'd have to have the right family around it. Stern, handsome father, with a beard. Prolific faded mother, 11 children of assorted ages, a grim governess, and somebody called poor Harriet, the poor relation who acts as a general dog body and is very, very grateful for being given a good home. I'll take your suitcase upstairs for you. Uh, oak room, did you say? Yes. Ooh, I do hope that it's got a four poster with no chest roses. It has it. I don't believe your husband is going to like me. How long have you been married? Are you very much a gift? We've been married just a year, but perhaps you'd like to go up to see your room. <laughs> Big dog. But I do so like knowing a lot about people. I mean, I think people are so madly interesting. Don't you? Well, I suppose some are and some are not. No, I don't agree. I think they're all interesting because you never really know what anyone is like or what they're really thinking. For instance, you don't know what I'm thinking about now, do you? Not the least. <laughs> you see, the only people who really know what other people are like are artists. And they don't know why they know it. But if they're portrait painters, it comes out in the canvas. Are you a portrait painter? No. I'm an architect. You see, my parents named me Christopher in the hopes that I would be an architect. Christopher Wren. <laughs> Actually, of course, everyone laughs about it and makes jokes about St. Paul's. However, who knows? I may yet have to that. Chris Wren's prefab nest may yet go down in history. <laughs> I'm gonna like it here. I find your wife most sympathetic. Indeed. And really very beautiful. Oh, don't, don't be upset. <laughs> there, isn't that like an English woman? Compliments always embarrass them. European women take compliments as a matter of course. But English women have all the feminine spirit crushed out of them by their husbands. There's something very boring about English husbands. Uh, would you come up to see a room? <laughs> Shall I? We can soak up the hot water boiler. Mrs. Boyle and get warm. Uh, is this your only luggage? Are you making that card, mister? Anything to it? Awful weather, isn't it? 
The taxi didn't risk coming up the drive. It stopped at the gate. We had to share a taxi from the station and there was great difficulty in getting back. Nothing more to meet us this evening. Well, I'm so sorry. We didn't know what train you would be coming by. Otherwise, of course, we'd have seen that someone was standing by. All trains should have been here. Let me take your coat. My wife will be down in a minute. I'll just go along and give Metcalf a hand with the bag. The drive might at least have you cleared off snow. Most doctors can catch her I must say. I'm so sorry, but uh, I'm Mr. Johnson. Oh, yes, I was very young. Young? <laughs> to be running an establishment of this kind? You can't have had much experience. There has to be a bit to get into everything, hasn't there? I see. Quite inexperienced, an old hag. I hope you haven't gone very long. Oh, certainly not. A lot of people don't know you have gone very long. It's just too late to do anything about it. The house is in perfect condition. Hmm. It's still in a part of paint. You know, you saw a wall in the throat. This way, Major. Oh, uh, this is my wife. Absolute lizard we're having. Oh, I thought one time we should make it. Oh, I beg your pardon. You know, if it goes on like this, I'll say we have about five or six feet of snow by morning. Ah, there's been anything like this since our whole neighbor. Um, I'll take these up. Uh, blue room and the rose room, did you say? Yeah, I think this is the second the rose room. We'd like the photos to be Major Metcalf in the blue room and Miss. Major! Sir! Do you have much certain difficulties here? <coughs> we have quite a good local woman who comes in from the village. The one in Dosta? <coughs> no in Dosta, but us, you see. I would have said that a proper set of servants is essential before opening this kind of establishment. I consider your advertisement was most misleading. May I ask if I'm the only guest here with Major Metcalf, that is? Uh, oh no, there, there are several guests. He's well as two, a blizzard, no less. All very unfortunate. I thought we, we couldn't very well foresee the weather. I adore nursery rhymes, don't you? Always so tragic and macabre. That's the children like them. Uh, Mr. Ben? Sure. Miss Boyle. How do you do? This is a very beautiful house, don't you think so? I have come to the time of life when the amenities of an establishment are much more important than its appearance. If I had considered this was running concern, I never should have come here. I understand it was fully equipped with every home comfort. There's no obligation for you to remain here, Mrs. Boyle, if you are not satisfied. <coughs> no, indeed, I should not think of doing so. If there have been any misapprehension, it would perhaps be better if you went elsewhere. I could ring up for a taxi to return. The roads are not yet blocked. We have had so many applications for rooms that we shall be able to fill your place quite easily. In any case, we are raising our funds next month. I'm certainly not going to leave before I have tried what the place is like. You needn't think you can turn me out now. Perhaps you would like to take me up to my bedroom, Mrs. Johnson? Certainly, Mrs. Boyle. You were wonderful. <laughs> I think that's a perfectly horrible woman. I don't like her at all. I would love to see you turn hard into the snow. For her, but... It's a pleasure I've got to forego, I'm afraid. Lord, there's another then. My car is bogged about half a mile down the road. Run into a drift. Uh, let me take this. Any more stuff in the car? No, I call the light. Ooh, glad to see you've got a good fire going. Uh, Mr. Wren, Miss. Oh, Tyswell. Uh, my wife will be down in a minute. Oh, no hurry. Got to get myself thought out. Looks as though you're going to be snowed up here. Weather forecast says 
Heavy falls expected, motorist wand, etc. Hope you got plenty of provisions in. Oh yes, my wife's an excellent manager. In any case, uh, we can always eat our hands. <laughs> Before we start eating each other, eh? <laughs> <laughs> any news in the paper? Apart from the weather. Oh, the usual political crisis. Oh, with a rather juicy murder. Murder? Mm -hmm. Murder. <laughs> they seem to think it was a homicidal maniac. Strangled a woman near Paddington. Such maniac, I suppose. Doesn't say much, does it? The police are anxious to interview a man seen in the vicinity of Culver Street at the time. Medium height, wearing darkish overcoat, lighter scarf, and a soft felt hat. Police messages to this effect have been broadcast throughout the day. <laughs> Useful description. Fit anyone pretty well, wouldn't it? <laughs> when it says the police are anxious to interview someone, isn't that a polite way of hinting that he's the murderer? Ah, uh, could be. Who was the woman who was murdered? Mrs. Lyon. Mrs. Maureen Lyon. Young or old? It doesn't say. Doesn't seem to have been robbery. Ah, oh, sex maniac, I told you. <laughs> oh, uh, here's an excuse for Molly. Uh, my wife. <clears throat> How do you do? It's enough for my... Would you like to come up to your room? There's the hot water if you like a bath. Ah, you're right, I would. <laughs> I must hurry out to the kitchen and get on with things. But your left hand seems all right. It won't be difficult. It's Mrs. Boyle who really frightens me. We must have a nice dinner. I was thinking of opening two tins of minced beef and cereal and a tin of peas. Mashing the potatoes. Oh, and we have stew cakes and custard. Do you think that'll be all right? Oh, oh I should think so. But not very original, perhaps. Do let me help. I adore cooking. Why not around it? You've got eggs, haven't you? Yes, we have we have plenty of eggs. We keep lots of fowls. We don't play as well as they used to, but we put down a lot of eggs. And if you've got a bottle of cheap, any type wine, you could add it to the minced beef and cereal, did you say? Give it a continental flavor. Show me where the kitchen is and what you've got, and I dare say I shall have an inspiration. Come on. Why on earth did you give him the best room? Uh, I told you, you like the four poster. <laughs> you like the free four poster, twerp. Giles! I've got no use for that kind. You didn't handle his suitcase, I did. I don't cut room with it. <laughs> there was no weight at all. If you ask me, there was nothing inside it. Why, one of those young men who go about bilking hotel keepers. No, 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 I don't believe it. I like him. Anyway, I think his face was rather peculiar, don't you? Oh, terrible female. She is a female. It seems very hard that all our guests should be either unpleasant or odd. Anyway, I think Mr. Metcalf's all right, don't you? I'll probably drink. You think so? No, I was just feeling rather depressed. Well, at any rate, we know the voice now. They've all arrived. <laughs> Could that be? Perhaps the uh, Culver Street murderer. No, don't! Pardons. I am. Uh... Where am I? This is Montreal Manor Guest House. Ah, what stupendous good fortune. Madam. Come on. What an answer to prayer. A guest house and a charming hostess. <laughs> My Rolls Royce, alas, has run into a sojourn. Blinding snow everywhere. I do not know where I am. 
I think to myself, perhaps I shall freeze to death. And then I take a little bag, I start to do this long, and I see before me big iron gates. Habitation. I am saved. Twice I fall into the snow as I come up your drive, but at last I arrive and immediately despair turns to joy. You can let me have your room, yes? Oh, yes. It's a rather small one, I'm afraid. Naturally. Naturally, you have other guests. We've only just opened this place as a guest house today, and so we're Rather you are. Charming. Charming. Uh, but what about your luggage? That is of no consequence. I have locked the car secure. Uh, but wouldn't it be better to get it in? No. 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 I can assure you on such a night as this, there will be no things abroad. And as for me, I have everything that I need here in this little bag. Yes, all that I need. You better get there at once. I'll see about your room. I'm afraid it's, it's a rather cold room since it faces north, but all the others are occupied. Oh, you have several guests then. There's Mr. Boyle, Major Metcalf, uh, Miss Hazel, and a young man called Christopher Wren. And now, you. Ah, uh, yes. The unexpected guest. The guest that you did not invite. The guests who just arrived from nowhere, out of the storm. It sounds quite dramatic, does it not? Who am I? You do not know. Where do I come from? You do not know me. I am the man of mystery. <laughs> but now, I tell you this. I complete the picture. From now on, there will be no more arrivals and no departures even. By tomorrow, Perhaps even already we are cut off from civilization. No butcher, no baker, no milkman, no postman, no daily paper, nobody and nothing but ourselves. That is admirable. Admirable, it could not suit me better. My name, by the way, is Baron Chin. Oh, yes. Ours is Ralston. Mr. and Mrs. Ralston. And this is Monkswell Manor Guest House, you said? Good. Monkswell Manor Guest House. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I consider it most dishonest not to have told you they were only just starting this place. Well, everything's got to have a beginning, you know. Excellent breakfast this morning. Scrambled eggs. Good coffee. Homemade marmalade. All very nicely served, too. The little woman does it all by herself. Amateurs, there should be a proper start. Excellent lunch, too. Corned beef. Oh, but very well disguised. Oh, baby. Could I red wine in it? You know, Miss Rawson promised to make a pie for us tonight. These radiators are not really hot. I shall speak about it. Well, they are very comfortable beds, too. Well, I think mine was. Or yours was, too. It was quite adequate. I don't quite see why the best bedroom should have been given to a very peculiar young man. He got here ahead of us. First come, first served. From the advertisement, I got quite a different impression of what this place would be like. A comfortable writing room and a much larger place altogether, with bridge and other amenities. The regular old tabby's delight. 
I beg your pardon? Uh, yeah, I see what you mean. No, indeed. I should not stay here long. No, no, I... Unbalanced mentally, I shouldn't want that. Probably escaped from a lunatic asylum. <laughs> I wouldn't be a little surprised. Giles? Yes? Uh, could you shovel the snow away again from the back door? Coming. I hope you worked out, eh? Good exercise. Must always have good exercise. Bedroom jug, chill blings, raw and bloody dug, a thin tattered blanket of child shivering from cold and fear. My fear? It, it sounds too grim. What is it, a novel? Oh, you didn't know I was a writer, did you? Are you? Sorry to disappoint you. Actually, I'm not. Guest house. No, I'm afraid Mr. Ralston can come to the telephone just now. This is Mrs. Ralston speaking. Who? 
The Berkshire police? Oh. Yes, yes, uh, Superintendent Hogbin, I, I'm afraid that's impossible. We're, we're snowed up, completely snowed up. The roads are impassable, nothing can get through. Yes, uh, very well. But, but what? Hello? Hello? Uh, one second, Major. Uh, well, do you know where there's another speed? Huh, trouble with the police. They'll be liquor without a license. They're sending an inspector or a sergeant or something. Well, you'll never get here. That's what I said, but he seems very confident that he would. No nonsense. Even a G couldn't get through today. Anyway, what's it all about? That's what I asked, but he wouldn't say. Just that I was to impress on my husband to listen very carefully to what Sergeant Trotter, I think it was, had to say and to follow instructions implicitly. <laughs> Isn't it extraordinary? What on earth do you think we've done? Do you think it's so final and crumpy? I do remember to get the wireless license, didn't I? Uh, yes, it's in the kitchen dresser. I'd rather near shave with the car the other day, but it was entirely the other fellow's fault. He must have done something. Oh, probably something to do with running this place. I expect we've ignored some tin pot regulation of some ministry or other. Practically can't avoid it nowadays. Oh dear, I, I wish we'd never left, left this place. We're going to be stuck up for days and everyone's cars and we're going to go Darling, darling, everything's going all right uh, at the moment. I filled up all the coast scuttles, brought in the wood. I'll stoke the other and do the chickens next or some other thing. Molly, come to think of it, it must be something rather serious to send a police sergeant trekking out in all this. It must be something pretty urgent. Pa, there you are, Mr. Ralston. Do you know that the meeting in the library is perhaps in some hope? I'm so sorry, Mrs. Boyle. We're a bit I short. I have gained 16 pounds for me. 16 pounds, and I do not want to freeze. I'll go and stoke it up. Mrs. Ralston, if you don't mind my saying so, that is a very extraordinary young man you have staying here. His manners and his ties. And does he have a brushless hair? Well, he's an extremely brilliant young architect. I beg your pardon? Christopher Wren is an architect. My dear young woman, I have naturally heard of Sir Christopher Wren. Of course, he was an architect. He built King's Hall. You young people seem to think no one is educated but yourself. I meant Miss Wren. His name is Christopher. His parents called him that because they hoped to become an architect. And he is, or nearly one, so it turned out all right. Hmm. Sounds a fishy story to me. I would make some inquiries about him if I were you. What do you know of him? Just as much as I know about you, Mrs. Boyle. Which is that you are both paying us 16 pounds a week. That's all I really need to know, isn't it? And now what concerns me? It doesn't matter to me whether I like my guests or whether I don't. My dear young woman, you are young and inexperienced and should welcome advice from someone more knowledgeable than yourself. And what about this foreigner? What about him? You weren't expecting him, were you? To turn away a bona fide traveller is against the law. You should know that, Mrs. Boyle. Why do you say that? Weren't you a magistrate sitting on the bench, Mrs. Boyle? All I'm saying is that this Peravicini, or whatever he calls himself, seems to me... Beware, dear lady. He's of the devil, and here he is. Ha-ha! <laughs> I didn't hear you come in. I came in on tiptoe, like this. Nobody ever hears me if I do not want them to. I find that most amusing. Indeed. Now, there was a young lady. Well, I must get on with my letters, else it gets a little warmer in the drawing room. My dear hostess looks upset. What is it, dear lady? Everything's rather difficult this morning because of the snow. Ah, yes. Snow makes things difficult, does it not? Or else it makes them easy. Yes, much easier. I don't know what you mean. No, there is quite a lot that you do not know. I think for one thing that you do not know very much about running a guest house. I dare say we don't, but we need to make a go for it. Bravo. Bravo. Not such a very bad cook. 
My dear lady, you are, without a doubt, an enchanting crow. May I give you a little word of warning, Mrs. Ralston? You and your husband must not be too trusting, you know. Have you references with these guests of yours? Is, is that usual? I thought guests usually just pray. It is advisable to know a little about the people who sleep under your roof. Take, for example, myself. I show up saying that my car is overturned in a snow drift. What do you know of them? Nothing at all. I am a thief, a robber, a fugitive from justice. That man is a murderer. No, 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 no. no. You see, and perhaps you know just as little of your other guests as well. Well, as far as Mrs. Boyer goes, the third drawing room is far too cold to live in. I shall write my letters to Miss Leo. Allow me to poke the fire for you. Miss Rolston, the sheriff's been about. I'm afraid the pipes have gone south as close from our frozen. Oh dear, what an awful day. First the police, and now the pipes and police. The police, do you say? They rang off just now, say that they're sending a sergeant over, but I don't think he'll get here. Oh, Ronnie calls more like that stones of it. Pardon, is there anything the matter? I hear the police are on their way here. Oh, that's all right then. No one is getting here today. Why, the drifts must be five feet deep, and the roads are banked up for miles. No one is getting here today. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Pavitin. Are you Mr. Ralston? Uh, yes. Thank you, sir. Detective Sergeant Trotter, Berkshire Police. Can I get these skis off and stow them somewhere? Uh, go around that way to the front door. I'll meet you. Thank you, sir. I guess that's what we pay a police force for nowadays, to go around enjoying themselves at winter sport. I tried to call the police, Mr. Ralston. But I didn't. Who is that man? Where did he come from? He has a drawing room window on skis, all over snow and looking terribly tired. You may believe it or not, but that man is a policeman. A policeman skiing. <laughs> this is Detective Sergeant Trotter. Good afternoon. You can't be a sergeant. You're too young. I'm not quite as young as I may look, madam. But very tired. Uh, we'll stow your skis away under the stairs. Uh, He's very attractive, isn't he? I always see that the police are very attractive. <laughs> no brains? You can see it at a glance. Well, hello. Mr. Olsen, uh, nice stairs. Quite the stairs. It, it was all right half an hour ago. The line's gone with the wet of the snow, I suppose. <laughs> so, we're quite cut off. We're quite cut off. Funny, isn't it? I don't see anything to laugh at. Indeed. Ah, it's a private joke of my own. This is the sleuthers attorney. <sighs> now then, we may get down to business, Mr. Rolston. Uh, Miss Rolston. Uh, would you like to speak to us alone? If so, we can go into the... Uh, if I might, room. necessary, sir. It'll save time if everyone's present. If I might sit at this table. All right. I beg your pardon. Thank you. <sighs> Do hurry up and tell us. Oh, it's nothing of that kind, Miss Ralston. It's something quite different. It's more a matter of police protection, if you understand me. Police protection? It relates to the death of Mrs. Lyon. Mrs. Maureen Lyon of 24 Culver Street, London West 2, was murdered yesterday in the 15th incident. You may have heard or read of the case. Yes, I, I, uh, I heard it on the wireless. You thought that she was strangled. That's right, madam. The first thing I'd like to know is if you were acquainted with Mrs. Lyon. Never heard of her. You may have known of her under the name of Lion. Lion wasn't her real name. She had a police record and her fingerprints were on file, so we were able to identify her without difficulty. 
Her real name is Maureen Stanning. Her husband, John Stanning, was a farmer who resided at Longridge Farm, not very far from here. Longridge Farm? Isn't that what it was yes, children? Yes, the Longridge Farm case. There are eight children. That's right, Miss. The Corrigans. Two boys and a girl. Brought before the court as a need of care and protection. A home was found for them with Mr. and Mrs. Stanning at Longridge Farm. One of the children subsequently died as a result of criminal neglect and persistent ill treatment. The case made a bit of a sensation at the time. But it's horrible. Well, Stanning was sentenced to terms of imprisonment. Stanning died in prison. Mrs. Stanning served her sentence and was duly released. Yesterday, as I say, she was found strangled at 24 Culver Street. But who did? I'm coming to that, madam. We found a notebook near the, th near the scene of the crime. In that notebook was written two addresses. One was 24 Culver Street. The other was Monkswell Manor. What? Yes. That's why Superintendent Hogbin, upon receiving this information from Scotland Yard, thought it imperative for me to come out here and see if you knew of any connection between this house, or anyone in this house, and the Longridge Farm case. No, no, there's nothing, absolutely nothing. It must be a coincidence. Superintendent Hogbin doesn't think it is a coincidence, sir. He'd have come out here himself if it was in any way possible. Under the weather conditions, and as I can ski, he sent me with instructions to gather full particulars from everyone in this house, to report back to him by phone, and to take what measures I thought fit to ensure the safety of this household. Safety? What danger does he think we're in? Good Lord, he's not suggesting somebody is going to be killed here. I don't mean to frighten any of the ladies, but quite frankly, yes, that is the idea. I can't believe it. It's all so crazy. Yes, sir. It's because it's crazy that it's dangerous. Nonsense. I must say, it does seem a bit far-fetched. I think it's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Is there something that you haven't told us of? Yes, Miss Ralston. Below the two addresses was written three blind mice, and on the dead woman's body was a paper with the words, This is the first written on it. Below those words was a drawing of three little mice and a bar of music. The music was to the tune of the nursery rhyme, Three Blind Mice. Uh, you know how it goes. Three blind mice. Three blind mice. See how they run. They all run after the farmer's wife. Oh, no, it's just horrible. There were three children, and one died. Yes, the youngest, a boy of eleven. What happened to the other two? The girl was adopted by someone. We haven't been able to trace the present whereabouts. The eldest boy will now be about 22, deserted from the army and has not been heard of since. According to the army psychologist, was definitely schizophrenic. A bit queer in the head, that's to say. They think that it's he who killed Mrs. Light Mrs. Stanley. Yes. And that he will show up here and try to kill one of us? But why? Well, that's what I've got to find out, madam. The way the superintendent sees it, there must be some connection. Now, you say, sir, that you yourself have never had any connection with the Longridge Farm case. No. And the same goes for you, madam? I... No, I mean, uh, no connection. What about servants? We haven't got any servants. That reminds me, uh, Sergeant Trouble, would you mind if I went to the kitchen? I'll be there if you oh, need me. That's quite all right, Mrs. Ralston. Now, can I have all your names, please? This is quite ridiculous. We are merely staying in a kind of hotel. We've only arrived yesterday with nothing to do with this place. But you'd plan to come here in advance, though. You booked your room here ahead. Well, yes, all except Mr. Sir Pacini. My car overturned in this no trip. I see. Uh, what I'm getting at is that anyone who's been following you around might know very well that you were coming here. Now, if there's just one thing that I want to know, and I want to know it quick, which one of you is it that has some connection with that business at Longridge Farm? Not being very sensible, you know. One of you is in danger, deadly danger, and I've got to know which it is. Very well, I'll ask one by one. You first, since you seem to have shown up here more or less by accident, Mr. Perry de... Perrault. Perrault, you know. Well, my dear inspector, I know nothing but nothing of what you have been talking about. I am a stranger in this country, and I know nothing of these local events of bygone years. Mrs. Boyle? I don't see it, really. I find it an impertinence. Why on earth should I have anything to do with this such distressing business? Miss. Oh. 
Pacewell. Leslie Pacewell. I've never heard a long bridge bar menu. I know nothing about it. You, sir? Metcalf. Major. I read about the case in the papers at the time. I ran our station in Ironburg. No personal knowledge. And you? Christopher Wren. I was a mere child at the time. I don't remember any hearing about it. And that's all you have to say, the lot of you. Well, if one of you gets murdered, you have yourself to blame. But now then, Mr. Ralston, may I have a look around the house? Right, dears, how melodramatic. He's very attractive, isn't he? I do not marry the police. So stern and hard boiled. Quite thrilled, this whole business. Three blind mice. How does that even go? Mm -hmm. Read, Mr. Wren. Don't you like it? But it's a signature too. It's a signature of the murder. Just fancy going to kick him as we're getting out of it. Melodramatic rubbish. I don't believe a word of it. But just wait, Mrs. Boyle, till I creep up behind you and feel my hands around your throat. Stop! Hey, that's a good place of It's a poor joke anyway. In fact, it's not even a joke at all. Oh, but it is. <laughs> that's just what it is. A madman's joke. That's just what makes it so delicious in my mouth. You could just see it, Lisa. A singular, ill-mannered, and neurotic young man. Where's Giles? Ha! Huh. Taking a policeman on a conducted tour of the house. Your friend, the architect, has been behaving in the most abnormal manner. That fellow seems nervy nowadays. Don't say he'll grow out of it. Nerves? I've no patience with people who say they have nerves. I haven't any nerves. Oh. Well, perhaps that's just as well for you, Miss Boyle. <laughs> Why do you say that? I believe you're actually one of the magistrates at the bench at the time. In fact, you were the one responsible for sending those three children to Longridge Farm. Really, Major Metcalf, I can hardly be held responsible. We have reports from welfare workers that the farm people seem very nice and were most anxious to have the children. Mm -hmm. They seem more satisfactory. Eggs and fresh milk and an out of doors life. Mm -hmm. Eggs. But that, but that replaced cakes, clothes, and starvation. But how was I to know? They were very civilly spoken. Yes, I was right. It was you. One tries to do one public duty and all one gets is abuse. <laughs> oh, please forgive me. I, I find all of this amusing. <laughs> I enjoy myself greatly. <laughs> I never did like that man. Where did he come from last night? I don't know. Huh. Seems a bit of a spirit to me. All rouge and powdered. Disgusting. Looks quite old, too. And yet, no surprise to look quite young. You'll be wanting more wood. I'll go get it. It's almost dark and it's barely four o'clock in the afternoon. I'll put it on the light. That's much better. Now, where did I leave my pen? Gosh, what a horrid little tune that is. Don't you like it? Reminds you of your childhood. Perhaps an unhappy childhood. I was very happy as a child. Oh, you were lucky. Weren't you happy? No. I'm sorry. Oh, it was a long time ago. One gets over things. I suppose so. <laughs> or do they? It's damn hard to tell sometimes. They say that what happens when your child matters more than anything else. <laughs> they say, they say. Who says? The psychologist. Oh. I'll humbug. It's a damn lot of nonsense. I've no use for psychiatrists or psychologists. I've never had much to do with them. <laughs> oh, a good thing for you you haven't. It's all a lot of hooey. 
Life, what do you make of it? Go straight ahead, don't look back. One can't help but looking back. I know. I expect all right. But sometimes things happen to make you remember. Mm, nonsense, it's a question of willpower. Is that really the right way? I wonder. Perhaps it's all wrong. Perhaps we're not really face them. Depends what you're talking about. Sometimes I hardly know what I'm talking about. Well, I won't let anything from the past affect me. Except in the way I want it to. Well, everything's all right upstairs. Would you mind turning that door? This place is full of drops. Sorry, madam, but I've got to get the lay of the land. Molly, what's all this? Well, I can fix the door. Nothing suspicious. I think I'll make my report to the superintendent now. Uh, but she can't. The line's dead. What? Since when? Make a left hand side just after you arrive. Wonder. May have been cut. Cut? But who could cut it? Mr. Ralston, just how much do you know about these people staying in your guest house? Cut? What? I. Are we. We don't really know anything. Ah, uh, Mrs. Boyer wrote from a Bournemouth hotel, Major Metcalf, from an address in, uh, where was it? Uh, Leamington. Yes, Wren wrote from Hampstead, and the case for a woman from a private hotel in Kensington. So I suppose you've all got ration books, that sort of thing? I will go into all of that, of course. Uh, but there's not much reliance to be placed on that sort of evidence. But even if this, this crazy killer shows up here and tries to kill us or one of us, if we're quite safe now, or because of the snow, no one can get here till it melts. Well, unless he's here already. Here? Already? Well, why not, Mr. Austin? All these people showed up yesterday afternoon, some hours after the murder of Mrs. Stanning. Plenty but, of time to get here. But except for Mr. Pavicini, they've all booked beforehand. Well, why not? These crimes were planned. Crimes? There's only been one crime in Culver Street. Are you so sure there'll be another one here? Uh, that it will happen here? No. I hope to prevent that. That it will be attempted, yes. I can't believe it. It's all so fantastic. It isn't fantastic, sir. It's just facts. You've got a description of what this man looks like in London? Medium height, indeterminate build, darkish overcoat, soft felt hat, spoke in a whisper. There are three darkish overcoats hanging in the rack now. One of them is yours, Mr. Ralston. There are three darkish felt hats. I don't believe it. You see, it's this telephone wire that worries me. If it's been cut... Uh, I must go on and get on with the vegetables. Is there an extension? Pardon, did you say something? Yes, Mr. Austin. I said, is there an extension? Yes, upstairs in the bedroom. Go up and try it there for me, will you? window open?